guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Reading Bear, and I hope you are ready for some more stories. And today, we'll take a look at some new entitled people content. If you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comment. And now, let's dive right into the stories. The first story is an entitled People Story. Five years ago, I landed a job at the international center of a well-known university in the United States. As an Asian female who looked young for her age, I was used to people doubting my authority. But I was determined to prove my worth and do my job to the best of my abilities. One of my main responsibilities was the recruitment, training, and management of a team of international student interns who worked at the front desk. It was a challenging job, but I enjoyed working with the students and helping them adjust to life in the United States. One day, while I was having my lunch break, I overheard a student yelling and berating one of my interns. I immediately rushed to the front desk area to intervene and introduced myself as the intern's supervisor. However, the student refused my assistance and demanded to speak to a real staff member. I tried to explain that I was the supervisor and that I could help him with his problem, but he continued to rant and insult me and my staff. He demanded an expedited service, which I knew I couldn't provide, and threatened to withhold his tuition payment. I tried to reason with him, but he wouldn't listen. That's when I realized that I had had enough. I stood my ground and told him that if he didn't leave immediately, I would call campus security to escort him out. He didn't take me seriously, so I picked up the phone and started dialing random numbers. That's when he ran out. I felt proud of myself for not backing down and for defending my staff. However, the incident stayed with me for days, and I couldn't shake off the feeling that I could have handled it better. I talked to my boss about it, and she gave me some tips on how to handle difficult situations like this. A few weeks later, I received an email from the university's International Student Services Department. They informed me that the rude student had filed a complaint against me, alleging that I was rude to him and had threatened him. I was shocked and upset that he would make such false accusations against me. I gathered all the evidence I had, including witness statements from my intern and other staff members who had witnessed the incident. I also wrote a detailed report of what had happened, including the student's behavior and my attempts to reason with him. The university conducted an investigation, and after a few days, they dismissed his complaint. They found that I had followed the protocol and had acted professionally throughout the incident. I felt relieved and vindicated that my reputation and job were safe. However, a few days after the complaint was dismissed, I received another email from the university. The student had filed another complaint, this time alleging that I had discriminated against him based on his race and nationality. He claimed that I had been biased against him because he was not Asian and that I had given him unfair treatment. I was shocked and appalled that he would stoop so low as to make such accusations against me. I knew that I had done everything by the book and that I had not discriminated against him in any way. However, I also knew that these kinds of accusations could be damaging to my career and my reputation. I gathered all the evidence I could, including emails, witness statements, and recordings of our interactions. I also hired a lawyer to help me navigate the legal process and protect my rights. The investigation took several weeks, and during that time, I felt anxious and stressed. I was worried about my job and my reputation, and I felt angry that someone could make such baseless accusations against me. Finally, the university announced their findings. They found that the students' accusations were unfounded and that there was no evidence of discrimination on my part. They concluded that I had followed the protocol and had acted professionally throughout the incident. I felt relieved and vindicated that my reputation and job were safe once again. However, I also felt frustrated that I had to go through this ordeal and defend myself against false accusations. It made me realize how important it is to stand up against entitled behavior and to document everything in case of future complaints or legal actions. As a result of this incident, I became more proactive in educating myself and my staff on how to handle difficult situations and entitled behavior. I also implemented a system for documenting all interactions with students and visitors to the International Center, to protect myself and my staff in case of future complaints or legal actions. Months later, I received another complaint from a different student, alleging that I had discriminated against her based on her gender and race. I was frustrated that I had to deal with another false accusation, but I was also prepared. 
I immediately gathered all the evidence I could, including witness statements, emails, and recordings, and presented them to the university's investigation team. This time, the investigation was quicker, and the university found no evidence of discrimination on my part. They concluded that I had followed the protocol and had acted professionally throughout the incident. I felt proud of myself for standing up against entitled behavior and protecting my staff and myself against false accusations. Update. After the second incident, the university decided to implement new training programs and protocols to prevent and handle entitled behavior and discrimination in the workplace. They also recognized my efforts and contributions to the International Center and promoted me to a higher position with more responsibilities and better pay. I felt grateful and honored to have been recognized for my hard work and dedication to my job. I also felt proud of myself for standing up against entitled behavior and discrimination, and for making a positive impact on the university's policies and practices. In conclusion, my experience at the university's International Center taught me the importance of standing up against entitled behavior and discrimination, and of documenting everything in case of future complaints or legal actions. It also showed me the value of education, preparation, and proactive measures in preventing and handling difficult situations in the workplace. The next story is titled, Too Young to Do My Job? Okay. Back in my college days in the late 90s, I worked in my college's alumni communication center. In reality it's a call center where college students work to ask the low-giving alumni for money. The college had professional folks to handle the big mega donors. I, luckily, wasn't a student caller, which seemed awful. I, a sophomore, was, and this was the official job title, data entry. A quick sidebar, we also had a couple of call coaches, who were seniors, who would monitor the callers and give them feedback on how to do a better job at asking alumni for money. Typically, donations in the 100 to 250 buck range. When callers made a call, they recorded the outcome of the call on a sheet of paper. I would then collect these sheets and then go to the sole computer in the caller center and record the data. Most of the results I entered would be no answer or left a message on a voice machine. Sometimes we got a donation. So, I would enter that caller outcome into the computer and somewhere else. The alumni department would generate a donation envelope that was mailed to the alumnus, so the alumnus could then mail a check back to us. Now, about 10% of the donations would be by credit card. At the end of the night, after the callers left, I would spend about 30 minutes processing the credit cards through this dial-up credit card machine. I did this without issue, for two months, September and October. Now enters Karen, the new boss lady over the call center. She finally notices the extra 30 minutes on my timesheet each day and asks me about it sometime in late October. I tell her that I process the credit cards after everyone leaves for the night. That's how I was trained by the previous data entry person. This upsets Karen, who says I am far too young to be handling credit card information. Makes clear that I am to stick to my job of only entering the caller's data. Period. End of story. Data entry only. No handling the money. The money is to be handled only by the grown-ups. To be perfectly clear, these were credit card numbers handwritten on a sheet of paper. Absolutely no cash money involved on my end. So, you got it condescending Karen. I stopped processing the credit card's donations. I set them in a pile at the end of the night right by the credit card machine. And with each passing night, the pile grows and grows. November ends, and this pile is now 250 pages or so thick. It also wasn't my job to ask questions like, who is processing the credit card sheets? Since the month ended and no credit cards were processed, Karen absolutely failed to hit her fundraising goals. She starts to berate the call coaches and the callers for not doing a good enough job. Karen starts spending more time in the call center, watching everything and everyone like a hawk. I continue to do exactly what I was told to do. One day, she would offer a prize, like, a college hat, and then the next, a long lecture about how everyone shouldn't be lazy. Over the course of December, I keep adding to the pile of unprocessed credit cards. It's a good 500 pages thick by now. Compared to the massive piles of sheets of no answers and left a message, it's not very noticeable. Naturally, someone in the alumni department has noticed that the donations coming in are down about 25% over November and December. This results in me coming back from Christmas break where I get to meet cool Chad, the new boss dude over the call center. He asks if my job includes processing credit cards. I told him Karen told me not to, but I was trained to process them. 
In fact, I'm the only one who has been trained how to process them. He says cool, please do process the credit cards. Cool Chad asks if there are any unprocessed credit card sheets. Oh yeah, there are. Cool Chad then asks me if I could get this done over the next couple of weeks. Oh sure, no problem. I spent several hours over a couple of Saturdays processing the credit cards. Cool Chad has the absolute best January ever in the history of the call center. The quotes are paraphrasing, it has been over 25 years. Why is Cool Chad, Cool Chad? In February, Cool Chad gave me a raise from 8 buck an hour to 10 bucks an hour. Thanks, Cool Chad. The next story is titled An Entitled Father Tried to Get Me Kicked Out of the Store for Having Big Breasts. So, the only reason why the entitled parent in this story didn't go to prison was because I was 18 at the time, but the fact that this happened the way it did still pisses me off. So, when I turned 18, I started working at a call center and often walked around the city a lot in order to avoid my toxic mother. Yes, I know what you're thinking, but I was safe and always had a form of self-defense. I was young but not stupid. Anyways, that year, I experienced another growth spurt and went from AC cup to a DD cup, and I was getting a lot of weird looks when in public. As much as I hate to say it, I was pretty young and naive, so I never thought it was because of the way my body changed, but I preferred to keep my distance from people. One day, I decided that I was going to go to Walmart so that I could pick out some yarn for a crochet project I wanted to work on while at work, we were allowed to crochet as long as we didn't avoid the calls that were automatically answered on our systems. While I was checking out the yarn, I noticed a kid, who looked like he was 13 14 standing at the end of the aisle watching me. Thanks to my history of getting bullied and beaten up, I immediately grew cautious and started debating if I wanted to get my yarn here or go to the hobby lobby across the parking lot. Before I could make a decision, an adult man came up and started leading the sun off, so I started to relax and think that I was overreacting. That is until the Ed came back. Ed excuse me, but where did you get you implants? They look so real. Me excuse me? I was really embarrassed and shocked, and I was already getting creeper vibes from this guy. Ed your implants. He waves his hands in front of my breasts and gets uncomfortably close to me. Where did you get them? Me. I was at a loss for words and didn't know if he was serious or just being a creep overall. At this moment, the kid came up and poked at my right breast, and I instinctively smacked his hand away, not caring that he was a kid. Me excuse me, but you really shouldn't do that, especially to a woman. It's not polite, and it's considered saw and shish. Ed immediately got mad at me and started screaming at me to not touch his son. He said that it was my fault and that, if I didn't want attention like this, then I should keep my, fun bags, put away. I was in tears and looking around for an escape, especially since, the more the Ed yelled at me, the closer he got to me. He started telling me that there was no way my breasts were real and that he needed to feel them to know for sure. He even told me that I needed to let the S touch them so he could learn the difference between implants and real breasts. Remembering the fact that I had my pepper spray in my bag for any occasion where I needed to defend myself, I usually had a knife, too, but that seemed a bit extreme in the heat of the moment. I pulled the can of pepper spray and told them both to step back and get away from me. At this point, an employee turned the corner, having heard us yelling, and saw me holding the pepper spray. He freaked out and called for a manager before coming up and yelling at me, demanding to know what I was doing. Thanks to me being in tears, the Ed was able to butt in and started lying to the employee that I was seducing his son and pulled my pepper spray out when the Ed had tried to come to his son's rescue. The S immediately started agreeing with the Ed, and the employee was already saying that he was going to call the police while the Ed demanded that me and my, big breasts, get kicked out of the store. Thankfully, at that second, one of my co-workers, a big, burly guy who often gave me a ride at night after hearing that I took the taxi home at night because my mother refused to teach me to drive, rounded the corner, leading a manager right to the mess. The manager demanded that everyone shut up and calm down, and, when we had, he turned to me and asked my side of the story. I told them how the Ed insisted that I needed to, let them, feel my breasts to see if they were real and how I had already explained I wasn't comfortable and didn't want their attention. The Ed backtracked on his story and tried to defend himself in EK, saying it was all for, educational purposes, and lied that I had agreed beforehand. This is when my co-worker got mad and pointed at the camera at the end of the aisle, reminding them that it would have caught everything. The Ed and EK both went silent for a moment before making a break for the exit. The manager took off after them, yelling at them to stop, and my co-worker berated the employee for threatening me the way he did. 
Of course, the Ed and EK got away, but the employee was fired, and I never went back to that store by myself per my friend's request. Please, teach your sons to respect women, and don't harass women. Plenty of us are insecure of our bodies and don't want the attention our bodies attract, and we appreciate it if you don't make things worse for us. Also, never assume that a woman's body is fake or that you are entitled to touch it. The next story is titled Today I Made a Customer Cry. I work in photo finishing, and I was helping a friendly lady who wanted prints off of her phone. She off-handedly mentioned that she recently lost all the photos on her phone, so she was only able to get prints from the last few weeks. I found it odd that the photos would just disappear, but the phone was still working. She insisted, despite being a technology illiterate, that she didn't accidentally delete them. She also off-handedly mentioned that she thought her phone had a memory card in it. This needed further investigation. I fully expected her to not have a micro SD card, since many older folks call the SIM card a memory card, but lo and behold there was one inside. I put the card into one computer, and it didn't show up at all, so I tried our Windows PC instead and it told me the disk was unformatted. Likely corrupted somehow by her cheap off-brand Android. I didn't want to get her hopes up, but since Windows was able to see it I thought there might be a chance. So, I took a deep breath, formatted it and threw it into our recovery software. I was able to recover 90% of the photos and video on that card. The lady had been waiting for her prints anyway, so I waved for her to come around to my computer and take a look. She looked at the photos on the screen and literally started bawling. It was all her most important pics, her grandson's grad, her dog that had passed a few months ago, family trips. Years worth of pics that weren't backed up anywhere. In the end she bought a new micro SD, and I gave her a DVD of the pics at no charge. After paying, she ran behind the counter and gave me a big hug. I later found out that she hands wrote my boss a letter and said it was the best customer service she'd ever had. Today has been a good day. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel and post some bear emojis in the comments.